Um, my name is Caitlin Swerf. I'm, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm not from Canada, I'm Australian. Um, a few people have shared their kind of stories and I did start out being interested in the ocean in Australia. I loved the ocean as I grew up, right next to the beach. Um, and I sort of took my love of physics and maths and I went and became a coastal engineer, which seemed like a great idea at the time until I realised I was working on development projects and exploitation projects and a whole bunch of things I didn't really enjoy. So I went back to school and I did my masters in physical oceanography. Um, and again, I really enjoyed that, but what I really wanted to do was be talking more like we're all talking about here, about having a direct impact on people. And that's why I'm really thrilled to be part of the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup. So for those of you who don't know our program, we are a joint program run by the Vancouver Aquarium and WWF. Um, we have staff across Canada, so we have three staff in Vancouver, one in Montreal and one in Toronto. Uh, our program started in 1994, right here in Vancouver, um, with a bunch of volunteers at the Vancouver Aquarium who were basically tired of seeing litter on their shorelines around Stanley Park. And so they started organising a volunteer-led cleanup. This expanded across BC and now we're all across Canada. Um, our program now runs year-round. You may have heard about it in the past as a fall program. We're now any time of year, anywhere land meets water. That includes going, for example, like I did last month to Edmonton for a clean-up where we had about a foot, or maybe a little more of snow. Uh, so we really do mean any time of year. Um, and that was a really great experience in a freshwater clean-up, which we also have in our program. By the way, if you're tweeting at us, we're at Clean Shorelines. So what happens on a cleanup? Um, you know, in terms of tools and resources that we have, this is the most powerful tool that our program has to connect people. Um, so we encourage people to go out to their local shoreline. It could be a beach, it could be a river or a lake. It could even be an urban drainage system. Anywhere that land connects with water is something that's connected to a waterway and therefore to the ocean. Um, and so we, we have groups of all sizes, one person up to, in Edmonton we had a thousand students going out to their local urban waterway to do a cleanup. So everything that, um, that is, all the litter that is found is picked up, we record, we have data cards that our volunteers take out, um, and they record and they submit all their data to us to let us know what they've been finding. In terms of who does our cleanups, we have a huge range of people who do them. We do have a lot of school groups, we also have a lot of groups like scouts and guides, um, and we're starting to get a lot of corporate groups as well who are doing it as a corporate engagement exercise. Again, I don't really feel like I need to tell you guys this, but when we're talking about why it's important to do a shoreline cleanup, we're really trying to connect people to the impact that their shoreline litter has. So you've probably seen a lot of these images. Um, this one up in the top right is our marine mammal rescue team, and they're out disentangling a sea lion off the west coast of Vancouver Island. Um, you can see it has a packing strap around its neck there. We also talk about litter as being mistaken for food by animals and that they can ingest it, um, as well as animals becoming entangled like the whale in the top left. This picture down here, which looks like a bunch of squiggles and dots, um, this is actually something we're talking about a lot more and that's microplastics. So this is taken from a sample of seawater and the squiggles in there are actually fibres from like polyester fleeces and these kind of things. And the little dots are tiny pieces of plastic that have um, either been purposely made, like microbeads, or something that's sort of fragmented from another plastic item. So when we're talking about why cleanups matter, this is really what we're trying to do. We're trying to take these messages and encourage people to go down to their local shoreline and connect with their local shoreline and hopefully their local community as well. So if we're talking about beyond the shoreline cleanup, shoreline cleanup is really great. We get people out for sometimes just one day a year. We're really hoping to encourage people to go out multiple times a year. Um, and we really want to be able to extend the legacy. So firstly, when you, when you do a cleanup, you have that direct impact on your, on your local shoreline and you're able to pick up something and remove it from being eaten or entangling an animal. But what we really want is an ongoing legacy where people take what they've seen on the shoreline and they apply it to their, perhaps um, their own consumption patterns and their own waste production. So that when they've seen a plastic water bottle on the shoreline, they don't want to use it anymore and they want to use their own reusable mug and that kind of thing. So one of the things that we've created to be able to go beyond a cleanup is our curriculum guides. So these are, um, we've created them by province through our education team at the Vancouver Aquarium. Um, and so we've, ha we've created a bunch of lesson plans and I'd love to talk to you guys more about this. I have, um, I have an example with me. 
Um, and these are, are written by our educators and are matched up for each province so that they match up with each curriculum requirement that the teacher needs. So it covers all kinds of things. They're from before the cleanup, during a cleanup, and afterwards. So that we give the teachers the tools to be able to tie in um, what they're doing to what they have to teach. And there can be lots of different things in this depending on the age group. Um, depending on the province, we've got them from K to six or K seven or eight, depending by province. Uh, one of the other things we've created is a partnership, uh, lots of partnerships actually, and one of them that, we, that was really exciting that's just come to be this year is with Girl Guides of Canada. And so this is some cool graphics that Girl Guides have created to be able to promote the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup to all of their Girl Guides groups. We had thousands of them out in April uh, for part of their spring events and uh, we're really able to use these kind of partnerships to reach more people. We also have partnerships with uh, municipalities across the country um, so that when they have their sort of municipal cleanups, they also are able to promote our program. But I think what, what strikes me about a lot of this is we talk a lot about um, engaging with kids and teaching kids and even teaching at a university level. But what I feel we, we can really, particularly, um, we, we have the capacity to do more of is talking to people who are not in an education system and being able to talk to people in, uh, in all kinds of settings, sort of everyday people, I don't think we can, we can leave them out of the education discussion. Um, so for example, one of the things I love about our program, we do have sponsors and they're some pretty widely varying sponsors from Lob Law across the country to YVR here in BC. And one of the things that we offer our sponsors is that we can help them to engage their employees. So we're getting people from maybe a supermarket in the middle of Canada and we're getting them to go down to their local shoreline and look at what they find there. And I find that really exciting because it's somebody who might have absolutely no connection to the ocean. They might have had no background in any kind of biology or any kind of marine science, but we have the potential to be able to reach them. So on the left up here is uh, one of our sponsors events with YBR. Um, and they have a great event, they get lots of their employees out. And on the right is um, just a corporate group and a cleanup I was at on Saturday. Um, and so lots of corporate groups use our program and use the resources that we provide and the tools we provide them to be able to take their team out. Um, at this case, going down to Second Beach and doing a cleanup there where they can really make the connection between uh, their impact and the items that they might produce and their local shoreline. One of the reasons why I think it's important for us to, to not forget about you know, reaching out to adults is that you really can have an impact. I think some of the stories in here that people have been telling about how they got into ocean education, they weren't necessarily as a kid, they were as an adult. Um, and so one of my co-workers, Tanya, as an adult, she sort of, she having no background in this, came to um, volunteering at the aquarium and started to hear about plastic in the ocean. And she's actually, as a result of that, she's become plastic free. So we are featuring her on our blog, which is a really great tool to reach out to our online audience at the aquarium. Um, and she talks about you know, how she's reducing and, and removing plastic from her life because she understands the impact that it has on our oceans. So this is a really effective tool that we have to reach out to our online audience. Um, being ba based at the Vancouver Aquarium, I know I've got, I've got a few people from the aquarium here. If you haven't had a chance to talk to them, there's some people from OceanWise and our interpretive team as well. Um, we do have the ability to have incredible exhibits. And so on the left up here is our uh, marine debris Christmas tree, which is created by Pete Clarkson, who works at Parks Canada, um, Tofino. And this tree is, I think it was around five metres tall, it was up for the holiday season. And it was made completely out of things that he found on the beach. Um, on the right is another exhibit that has just opened. If anyone's going to the aquarium tomorrow, be sure to check this out. This is about the tsunami um, in Japan in 2011. So we're tying in that story, uh, which a lot of people sort of are familiar with and using it to show that there is actually a lot of ocean garbage out there that's not related to the tsunami. Um, and so having a million visitors a year coming through the Vancouver Aquarium, we're really able to showcase these stories and to be able to talk to people um, about things they, they might not have otherwise thought about. <coughs> So just to go over some of our successes and challenges in our programs, I don't know if you can read this. Uh, the top picture is a map. We're trying to show, so this is some of our data from 2014. So when we get our data cards back from our, um, from our participants, we put all the data together. We actually report it to the International Coastal Cleanup, which is an initiative of the Ocean Conservancy. 
um, and they have lots of people reporting from all over the world. And so last year, we our volunteers across Canada um, cleaned up about two and a half thousand kilometres of shoreline, um, and they removed about 140,000 kilograms of litter from shorelines. This is freshwater shorelines and saltwater shorelines. So that's about 70 dump trucks worth if you're trying to visualise it in your head. Um, another thing that is also, I'm, I'm putting it down here as a success, but I actually think this is a huge <laughs> failure. These, these are the items that were picked up off our shorelines last year. Um, as, you know, as a species, I think it's a huge failure that we have this much stuff out on our shorelines. But this is what we were able to pick up through approximately 1,900 cleanups last year with um, around 50,000 registered participants um, across Canada. So we have huge numbers of people that we're able to reach through our program. And you can see some of these stats are kind of frightening. Um, you know, over 300,000 cigarette butts. Um, and then from there, the other items, there's a lot of plastic up there, basically. So when we're talking about litter in the ocean, it's really a plastic pollution problem. Um, and we really want people to recognise that when they go on a shoreline cleanup and to think about how it impacts the wildlife in their area. So to talk a little bit about our challenges. Um, this map shows a percentage of participation in different areas across Canada and it's actually it's making it look a little bit more positive than it is because most of our participation in the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup is in BC and Ontario. Um, and we have a lot of difficulty recruiting big numbers of people from other provinces. So I think we've talked about that today, you know, the challenge of reaching out to interior provinces and showing them that they're connected. And one of the things that we've kind of recognised with this is that the story of, you know, to somebody in the middle, living in the middle of Canada, telling them that they're connected to the ocean is a little bit too abstract. So what we try and do instead is inspire a sense of ownership of their local shoreline because that's where they walk their dog or that's where they take their family. So rather than trying to tell this sort of slightly more complex story of you are connected to the ocean, it's more like look at the direct impact you're having on your shoreline. Um, one of the other, you know, the other challenges that we really have uh, across Canada is we have our curriculum guides by province, but we'd really love to be able to reach into some of the education uh, areas in, in the middle of Canada and to be able to get our curriculum guides into the hands of those teachers um, so that they can teach our material and they can take their classes on shoreline cleanups. Another challenge as well is um, the definition of a shoreline and I think this sort of ties into the, the interior premises as well. Um, to us, a shoreline is anywhere that land connects with water. Uh, getting that message out to people across the country can be really challenging. So I've got a picture up here of some of the shorelines. Well, all of these are shorelines. All of these are connected in some way to a waterway and therefore they're connected to the ocean. So we're really trying to keep on pushing out that message. Um, in the future, the things that we're hoping to develop, we really want to be able to develop um, an adoption program or something, something that really inspires ownership of a shoreline so that people feel like um, they are inspired to go down to their local shoreline and do a clean up multiple times a year. The other thing that we really are trying to incorporate as well is working with the Coastal Ocean Research Institute at the Vancouver Aquarium with Dr. Peter Ross and developing microplastics exercises where ideally we'll be able to get students um, and all kinds of participants across Canada to be able to, uh, to look at the microplastics in their sediment or in their water samples um, to be able to see what's there that they can't see with their um, that they can't see with their eyes. And the idea behind all of that is that we can tie all these, all these things that you see on a shoreline or the things that you can't see back to an impact. So if you can say to somebody, you might not be able to see the tiny pieces of plastic here, but they came from water.